episodes in session. We're back on r slash am I the asshole filtered. Can I say, by the way, thank you, people. I, I get linked probably like a Reddit thread a day now on Twitter, and I'm assuming that it's only going to uh, grow from there. Um, but I just weekly, this is kind of like a, an unintended consequence. I am getting the absolute worst Reddit threads of all time link to me every single day on Twitter, which I'm, I'm here for. It gives me the, uh, people send me like, uh, like today I got a Reddit link that was just like, am I the asshole for telling my surrogate to stop pretending to be my child's mother? And you're like, oh my God, that's, uh, I, I mean, it's just, it gives you some, some entertaining morning reading. Let's put it that way. Um, but we're back with, uh, am I the asshole filtered? And I got to tell you, I'm just, I'm doing a quick perusal. And I see that we have an, an awful lot of uh, assholes here. Not my words. Those are the words of the... Uh, these are the words of the, the people, of the plebiscite that have, has taken place. Am I the asshole for kicking my mother-in-law out of family dinner after she said my lasagna tastes like freezer lasagna? Am I the asshole for refusing to turn off Kanye West after my girlfriend's friend requested I do? <laughs> I'm excited, okay. How about this? <clears throat> Am I the asshole for telling my daughter that if she won't stand up for herself, I don't want to hear about it? Your daughter, okay. Um, well, look, I'm going to tell you, you, sometimes you just gloss over some of this stuff in the headline and you think to yourself like, oh, well, let's hear it out. Look, I'm, a, I'm only the father to a 10-month-old daughter. She doesn't get into these kind of problems uh, right off the bat. Um, at least I hope not. But simultaneously, it's a good start. Am I the asshole for telling my daughter if she won't stand up for herself? I don't want to hear about it. I divorced my wife almost 20 years ago because her work, li work life became so severely toxic to my mental health. I was developing extreme anger management issues. What a bitch. How... <laughs> Just immediately. I divorced my wife 20 years ago. It, I developed anger management issues, but it wasn't my fault at all. I had no agency. Her work life became so toxic. It just made me so mad. To keep it short, it didn't matter who it was. She would not stand up for herself at work. So day after day, she's telling me these work stories about how upset she was. I'd give her suggestions and nothing would change. Things escalated and slowly but surely I'm building a resentment I didn't know was there and found myself angry anytime she would talk about work. She refused to get therapy or do anything to improve her situation. Our marriage slowly fell apart because of it. It wasn't until I decided to get therapy myself because I couldn't control my anger that I realized the relationship itself had become toxic for me. It took a lot longer after that, but we ultimately divorced as a result. Okay. I have to say right off the bat, phase one, paragraph one. At least he's acknowledging that he has some issues, but the fact that he, you know, despite the fact that he had been married, he, he didn't pick up on like one of the number one keys for uh, maintaining a human relationship, which is sometimes people just want to vent and they don't want to... Um, have their vent where they get their stress out be met with like, well, why didn't you just take one simple solution uh, and do it? You know, sometimes you just got, cause it, maybe the reason, and I, I'm getting too into this early, but maybe the reason she didn't want to stand up for herself at work is because I, I, as much as this sounds, uh, you know, maybe like a little passive, some things that make you annoyed at work aren't worth getting into like a confrontation over. Uh, especially as it might affect your, your f future employment status. Like sometimes you, shit rolls downhill in, a, in an environment like that and you just got to be like, I'm annoyed as hell, but I'm just going to go home and vent to my spouse because that's like one of the roles they have when you talk about the, you know, when you exchange vows for richer or poorer. Do you vow to listen even though sometimes a solution will pop into your head that seems like it could fix the entire issue? Do you pledge to recognize that they probably thought about that solution and then thought about, you know, here's the reasons I don't want to do it, so help me God, amen. I don't think you say amen in the vows. I don't remember. Anyway, fast forward to present day and my adult daughter is now working in the federal government and she's letting the same thing happen to her. We talk on the phone every other day and the past three phone calls she's complained about the same situation. I've given her... Well, the only thing I can say at this... You, you think at any point in this guy's uh, treatise, he's like, maybe it's genetic? They, there's the, the, the complaining gene? 
It couldn't be that like literally everybody complains about their job. It it has to be. Um, it, it's just a habit that's been passed down. We talk on the phone every other day. I've given her suggestions and nothing has changed. I immediately recognized my anger building, so I stopped her last night and told her if she can't stand up for herself, I don't want to hear about it. She called me an asshole and hung up on me. This morning, my son called to ask why my sister's telling everyone an asshole to hear my side. So I told him the abridged version, and he told me I'm an asshole as well. Well, can I say something here? Again, we're assuming these posts are real. If your daughter and son both tell you you're the asshole, you don't have to go to Reddit. Because even if Reddit tells you you're not the asshole, what are you going to do? Are you you're going to like link them in your it's going to be all caps forward re re forward forward you won't believe this. You know, whatever whatever your kids think is, is unfortunately your reality. Anyway, I may have been a little tactless in how I shut down the conversation, but I can't invite that anger into my life again. I, look, men, I'm glad we're talking about anger, our emotions, he got therapy, you know, so on and so forth. But aren't you, you got an adult daughter who's, Working for the federal government, that means you gotta be like in your mid 40s or older. Like, can't you just deal with it? <laughs> I know how this sounds, but like, can't you, can you just, you know, push that down and have like one too many yinglings on the weekend like a normal person? Like, I just don't understand. Yeah, they're your kids. This is what they're there for. This is, I mean, they're not just to complain, but at the same time, I think you gotta take some responsibility for your. For your awareness here, or for your for your own well being, I guess you are, but not in a healthy way. Oh, here we go. I love when an edit comes in, and the person has clearly missed the reason that people think that they're an asshole, and they're they're being a little bit judgmental. And instead, they're like, "Hey, maybe I wasn't specific enough about this ancillary detail that I talked about in the first paragraph." Here's some instances of me standing up with my wife. She'd be in a team of five, but because she was very efficient, her team lead super or manager would keep putting more work on her. Even when she had more work that she could do, she would never say no. At one time, she was on seven projects, and everybody else in her team was on one. She just wouldn't say, I can't, I'm swamped. Yo, Fanta pull. Thanks for the gifties, thank you. I can't, I'm swamped. I would literally suggest you say something like, I'm already on seven projects, I don't have time. I know X is only on one project right now. Have you asked them? That's a great way to get ahead in the corporate uh, politics game. <laughs> hey, thanks for giving me more work, but uh, Jessica's not very busy right now. Maybe Jessica could do it? That's a good way to get uninvited to the potluck. Um... She would complain and stress out and have breakdowns before the week started because of work anxiety, but she still wouldn't say no. After years of seeing this happen to my wife, but ne her never doing anything to change it or to try to improve herself so she'd have the confidence, the anger I was feeling at her workplace was carrying over to her. I couldn't stomach hearing about her work anymore without immediately becoming angry, but I kept bottling it up until I couldn't anymore. Now my daughter is letting the same thing happen to her. So I just keep hearing, ab oh, just hearing about it is immediately putting me back in that place again. And the anger I used to feel is coming up with my daughter. This is, uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised to see that, I mean, this is the, oh, literally I can't even scroll further. Anyway, I'll just tell you, it's, uh, you're the asshole 43%, not the asshole 39%, which is a little surprising uh, for me, but I do know that's the Reddit demographic as well. Um, I think there, there might be a lot of, let's say, younger people who are like, well, if she didn't want a solution to the problem, she shouldn't have been talking about it in the first place, you know? Um, and by the way, I so often hear this as like, uh, 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 like, oh, women don't want a solution to their problem. They just want to complain. Whereas men are like hardwired to be uh, like solutions providers. And I'm like, I think I bought into that like Kool-Aid when I was in the, when I was in my early 20s. But now I'm like, dude, I just love to complain all the time. Sometimes I'll just go into the Discord and I'll, I'll complain about like a stranger I saw. I'll be like, you won't believe this moron that I heard it, that I saw at the grocery store yesterday. People don't go like, oh, you know, they should go up and tell them to modify their behavior. They just drop middle finger emojis and say, give them one of those next time. And I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> Complaining's just, it's, it's, it's part of the, the human nature, you know? 
Anyway, I would say before we look at the update, absolutely, um, absolutely the asshole. Look, I think you got to separate the concerns here, right? Is it okay to not love hearing someone complain about something that seems easily fixable? Yeah. And if it was like someone that's a little bit further outside of like your sphere of influence, then, you know, you'd be like, hey, I, you know, if you're just going to constantly complain about this stuff, you ever thought about adjusting your behavior? Then, you know, you could say that maybe to a friend or to a, uh, an acquaintance and get away with it. Um, but to a spouse, that's really like, that's part of the foundational duties, I think, which is like, you, you, I mean, again, I, I made a joke about how it's part of the vows, but like I, much of the communication that happens between spouses is probably just like bitching about stuff that happened at work that day. You get it out, I get it out, and then it's okay, what do you want for dinner? Two hours later, we decide and we eat, then we go to bed. Like that's that's basically what it's all about. So if you're if you're not up for that, that doesn't make them the asshole. It 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 does mean that you you know maybe you did the right thing by getting divorced. But I think he's also realizing that uh, you know literally everybody does this. Like I don't believe it's uh, this is like a, a just the mother and daughter situation. I think pretty much everybody that he talks to in his life must bitch about work now and then. But simultaneously, everybody else he can just like walk away from. So yeah, I think I, I think it does make him the asshole. I mean, I hate this be like, you know, the as the husband or father, your role is just to lay down and go like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh, wow, she sucks, wow, that's crazy. But like, yeah, pretty much, you kind of gotta. And you recognize that they do it for you as well. Or maybe, like, if they don't do it for you, you should start venting a little bit more. You should, When you have a bad day at work, instead of just shoving it down inside, you should start going off. Anyway, that's so I, I think, yeah, kind of the asshole. Let, let's look at this link to update. Oh, Lord. It, it, every time. <laughs> I wanted to lead by clearing up a few things. My wife and I were married for seven years before my anger issues manifested. I was her emotional support for even longer. She introduced me to so solutions and support. We had our own rules. On our daily walks, I just listened. If she spoke about work at home, it meant we could discuss it. Normal, just a very normal uh, sort of arrangement to have with your spouse. Uh, excuse, on our walks, you can complain. That's the safe spot for complaining. When we're within the confines of the home, any complaining is meant with a solutions-based response. I did tell her she needs to get help, but that was at the end of our relationship. She refused couples therapy, personal therapy, and insisted it was my responsibility to be there for her. Okay, well, let me just say, that does make her kind of the asshole, if, if we take this as true. You know, the, you, you refusing to uh, be involved, uh, or the, her refusing to be involved in therapy makes her kind of the asshole. Sure, okay. Simultaneous, I, I do also need to say, like, so much of the, the post is, like, about the relationship with the ex-wife, and the original post is, am I the asshole for telling my daughter to shut up, basically. So, like, the whole relationship with your ex-wife is just background context. Like, like, let's get to the part where you're like, oh, and my daughter, you know, I was hungry in the conversation. Anyway, um... Ultimately, I had to walk away from the marriage. My daughter is nearing 30 years old. She is not a child. And I'm happy to say we have a great relationship. Her regular calls should be proof of that. She did call me an asshole, though. For those wondering why my anger is hard to control, here's, here's why it's different for me than other people. Prior, I never really got angry. I was raised with the belief that if something happens, it's happened. You got no control over it, so don't let it bother you. I never had much of an experience with anger because of this. When I started to feel it, I just bottled everything. I ignorantly believed that I had control. Update. I had a Zoom call with my children. I started by apologizing to my daughter. Okay, acceptable. I've never spoken to either of them about why their mother and I divorced, so I explained it to them uh, as minimally as I could. I confessed my mental health struggles with anger. I made it clear it wasn't her fault. Now they have the whole picture. Again, it's, um, <laughs> it's just like, I, React Core wouldn't exist if this were the case, but yeah, this is like, I mean, it's just, it, it just scares me that like a, a, a father to a 30-year-old uh, woman is like, 
Before I thought to apologize, I just ran it by Reddit first to make sure I wasn't going to, you know, beta myself or something like that. But anyway, the conversation went well. I answered their questions as best as I could. I reassured my daughter she can always speak to me and she can vent to me. A little sus, but that's okay. She asked if it would help if she let me know ahead of time that she wants to vent about work. And it was embarrassing, but I asked if she could. We agreed that she'll text me bad work day. And if I'm able to, I'll call her. My son didn't have much to say, but he did tell his sister she can call him to vent too. Okay, that, you know, if it works, it works. Um, but again... I don't know, maybe I'm idealizing the situation where I'm like, I think if you're the dad, you kind of got to, you know, so I mean, I look, it's good, probable men mental health, like quarantining. But I do when I look to myself as being like a, you know, if I'm uh, like 60 and, and my daughter's in her 30s or, or getting to be in her 30s and she texts me like bad work day and I'm like, sorry, I'm not in the right headspace to help you out right now. I'm like, you know, I kind of feel like that it's, if you got to do it for self-care, you got to do it for self-care. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, this is kind of your role as the father, <laughs> I guess. But anyway, um, whatever. If it works for them, it works for them. You know, D different stuff for different people. Um, what you got to do, you got to find your daughter a spouse. I think that's, that's my asshole solution to this. Um, which is that I think you need to, this is like an unethical life pro tip. You need to find your daughter, a spouse that can receive the venting instead of you. Cause it sounds like he wants to live in a world where nobody else ever talks about their problems. So I think at this point you got to start being the matchmaker for your daughter. You got to be like, you know, hey, I've got to have lined up a series of great listeners. Pick one. <laughs> but then what if she has to vent about her husband? No, that's I think that's a sibling thing. I think that's then she texts the brother and says bad marriage day. Anyway, um, not much else to say. Thank you to everyone for your kindness and time for everyone who was hostile with me. I hope you find your own peace. I love that, man. Look. He he was he seems like he came to the end of being a nice guy, but I love that he he was kind of like an asshole in the first post, but then in the at the end of the second one, he's like, I hope you find a way to get rid of your anger someday. Anyway, still that's a good ending, you know. Again, it might not be the way that I would ideally solve this problem, but uh, if they were able to to come to a solution, like as a result of their as a result of that, then then who am I to judge, right? Who am I to say that that's not okay? I'm just giving my two cents and trying to make it entertaining as well. It seems like a little bit of a happy ending. Verdict? Or OP, OP, original post, kind of the asshole. Update? Recognize that the best way to solve this stuff is probably to just have a conversation with the person who got offended rather than Reddit. And then, you know, there you go. Am I the asshole for telling my sister she's a failure as a parent? Oh, no. Because her son is in a relationship with a cartoon character pillow? Uh... <laughs> Just take a little sip real quick. Am I the asshole for telling my sister she's a failure as a parent because her son is in a relationship with a cartoon character pillow? Chad's asking the right question. What, what character is it? Good day, y'all. My 18-year-old nephew is in a relationship with a body-sized pillow with some sort of Japanese girl cartoon character on it. Yes, a relationship, like that's his girlfriend, with a freaking cartoon character. He proudly walks around with the pillow and talks to it. I asked my sister what the frick is going on, and she called me a bigot for not supporting this. I told her she failed as a mother and that he needs to be straightened out. If he's mentally ill, he needs to seek professional help. Otherwise, someone needs to set him straight because this is pathetic. Um, this it, it might be fake, yeah, or like definitely is fake. But again, we always assume that it's real. I I do love the the second paragraph. There's two options. He either needs therapy from an accredited mental health professional. If he won't do that, someone's got to set him straight. Someone, someone's got to sit him down. You know what they got to do? They got to make him be in a relationship with like an entire crate, like a shipping container full of body pillows. Like when you're 
dad catches you smoking a cigarette when you're 12 and he makes you smoke a whole pack on the porch with him, you, you got to be in a relationship with every single body pillow until you get it out of your system. Anyway, the whole family's against me. I don't hate this kid. He needs help, but I can't understand why I'm the obli one who thinks there is a problem here. Um, there's not a lot to go on here, but I will say you're the asshole 48%, not the asshole 35%. That's what we got. Everybody sucks here, 14%. I'm the obli one. <laughs> Again, I, I think it's important, and I'm not sure if everybody does this, you know, when they look at these posts. But for me, I think it's important to, like, separate perhaps the way that you feel about an issue, like, you know, your nephew being in a relationship with a body pillow, versus the actual response that was had. You know what I mean? So I think some people would read this and be like, you know, if your nephew's in a relationship with a pillow and genuinely thinks the pillow's his girlfriend, that's pretty cringe. And as a result, you cannot be an asshole regardless of the actions you took. Whereas I'm like, look, I'm if, if my niece or my nephew brought a body pillow out and was like, this is my girlfriend... I would have to think long and hard about how many anecdotes I was going to reveal to the public on that one because it would be a once-in-a-lifetime story. Like, that's like a career-making story to introduce into the lore, but simultaneously maybe a little bit over the line to sacrifice your nephew for content. <laughs> I probably wouldn't, okay, but I, in the back channel, I would be like, you know, hey, is everything okay? That being said, um, that doesn't mean you can, like, could you talk to the nephew maybe, or even have like a sit-down conversation with your sister? You know, you can't just go, hey, you f failed as a mother um, as a result of this, like, that's, like, why is it always, like, it goes nuclear immediately? It's never, like, an escalation. It's always, like, I don't like the mashed potatoes. Well, how about you fucking die? Like, it always goes straight to infinity. Like, either they're missing context or, or like, these people are already, like, on the razor's edge of, of being livid at all times. Um, regardless, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're the asshole. You're the asshole for telling your sister you're a failure as a parent because your son is in or because her son is in a relationship with a cartoon character pillow. Do not take that to mean that I'm saying get out there to Bed Bath and Beyond and and start playing the you know there's plenty of fish in the sea in the upholstery section. Rather, it's more like you don't get to have cool uh, you know good boy credits for being like hey that situation's like a little bit fucked up. I'm not going to do anything to solve it, but have you ever noticed, like, you, you, you haven't actually done anything. You're like Leonard Nimoy in the monorail episode of The Simpsons. Like, yeah, you've recognized it's unusual, and you're like, hey, fix it. And then they're like, I don't think that anything's wrong. And you're like, well, you failed as a mother. Anyway, yeah, plus you never, you never told us uh, which character, and that's important. As you have never told us which character, how am I supposed to judge here? I don't know any characters from anime. Um, um, Major Kusanagi? Was it Major Kusanagi? Was it Hank Hill? <laughs> All right, take me back. Oh, now we finally got to a good one here, okay? Not, not that the other ones didn't have a little bit of meat, but... Oh, man. Am I the asshole for refusing to turn off Kanye West after my girlfriend's friend requested that I do? This is sort of a petty squabble. <laughs> Am I the asshole for refusing to turn off Kanye West after my girlfriend's friend requested that I do? I, this is sort of a petty squabble I had, but my girlfriend told me after I was being unreasonable, and I can see why she said so. But I still made the post nonetheless. For entertainment, I appreciate it for the content. Easy clap. Upstairs champion for posting this for content. Yesterday, my girlfriend, her friend, and I were all going somewhere, so I picked her and her friend up. While in the car, I began to play some Kanye West and rapping along with the lyrics. After a couple minutes, my girlfriend's friend requested I turn them... By the way, can I say, um, a little cringe. This is just my two cents. To, 
like if you're in the car by yourself, do whatever you want. If you're in the car with like uh you know, your your partner, close friend, whatever, you could do whatever you want. I mean, you could literally do whatever you want at any time, I guess, but um this crosses the social norm for sure. Uh regardless. After a couple of minutes, my girlfriend's friend requested I turn the music off because she finds Kanye misogynistic and annoying. I refuse because it's my car and I'm entitled to play what I want, so I continued to play him. After we dropped her off, my girlfriend told me I was being unreasonable and should have just turned him off to avoid any arguments. I can see her POV, but at the same time, it's my car and I can do what I want. Again, And then the edit, of course. The, the edit is always like, I was playing the album 808s and Heartbreak, Paranoid, Robocop, Heartless, Streetlights. For those of you who aren't familiar with Kanye's discography, it has no curse words and is an album about his breakup. It's like, it, does, it, does it change your opinion that I ignored her request if you know it's 808s and Heartbreaks? Does that, does that give you the kind of context that makes me come across in a better light? Okay, we got 58% you're the asshole, 35% not the asshole. I mean, here's the thing. There, there are unspoken rules in a car, you know? Like, let, let's talk about it. If someone calls shotgun, you respect it. There is a rule that overrides shotgun. If the uh, boyfriend or girlfriend of the driver is around, the rules of shotgun do not apply any longer. The, the romantic partner always gets... Uh, the front seat next to the driver. The driver gets the right of first refusal on the music. Now, there, there's probably some, you know, if you got a little kid in the car, maybe you don't want to be listening to like hardcore gangster rap or something like that. But the driver gets to choose the music or the right to pass the music on to another person. Hey, can you pick the songs? The person in the passenger seat is always in charge of the navigation. So like it used to be they'd have to plan a route out or get a map or something like that or pay attention to what the exit was going to be. Now it's, hey, you program the GPS or like look it up in Google Map on your phone. And then basically like everybody else is just don't... The, the, the driver is in control. If the driver says you can't eat, then you can't eat in the car, okay? Within reason. They don't want crumbs in their car. They don't want filet of fish sandwich wrappers all over the floor. Then so be it. If they say, you know, go to town, I even put some like potato chips in the back. Then you go for it. You know, it's it's simple. Everyone else is there. Yeah. You keep the driver awake, entertain, don't distract, etc. So, yeah, don't don't get into fist fights. Don't don't start throwing stuff. Everybody. There's one other unspoken rule, which is when the GPS talks, everybody is silent until the driver says you can talk again. And that's it. I think that's pretty, that's, that's it. Not, oh, when, when you've been driving for like an hour and there's like three exits on the highway coming up close. And then you're like, in 600 meters, take exit. And then people are like, Whoa! and you're like, shut up. I gotta know. Is it, is it exit 118A or 118B, right? Okay, so anyway, now that we've gone through that, let me, uh, let me hydrate. Um, definitely, there's 808s. There's no swearing in 808s. Why, why are you and the OP of the opinion that you can't be offensive without swear words? Some of the most offensive shit I've ever seen has been, like, G-rated. Maybe Dan posted it. Dan, are, are you the OP here? <laughs> I'm just saying, look, again, you have to separate the issue from the behavior, okay? Is the issue reasonable? I think when you're in the car, you know, if you don't like the music that's being played, my two cents is that you get over it, right? You know how many times I've, I've in high school especially, I drive with Mouth, he puts on like some some trivium or some in flames or something like that. I got no, like I, I derive no value from it. I have no idea what's being said because it's, it's growling and I haven't learned that diction yet. What do I do? Oh, can we put on some broken social scene or something like that? I'm like, nah, it's his car. I'm, I'm happy to get a, a drive in the 1994 Volvo station wagon that uh, was, was older than I was at that point And it was, uh, 
you know, it was his uh, generosity to drive me home in the first place. That being said, I also think if you're the driver, you got to worry about other people's concerns. You know, if, if I was driving a car, I consider myself like the general manager of like a cool nightclub on wheels. And if a customer came up to me and was like, hey, the music that's being played is uh, making it a little bit inhospitable in here for me, I would be like, you know what? Thank you so much for your comment. Let's put on, you know, the Carpenters or something like that. Seems like there's a compromise where you could have found something that was not Kanye West, but that you both enjoyed, is I guess what I'm saying. Um, regardless. I was I would say I mean this one's weird for me. I don't think that OP had to, you know, bring the nuclear hammer down and I think that, you know, it is their car. My my unspoken rule is, you know, the driver gets the right of first refusal on the music. Um that being said, I do have to say it kind of is his car his rules. I don't know if you thought I was going to end up on this side of this, but I, I, I don't know if this is even an everybody sucks here. I almost feel like this is a, like he's the asshole, but also he's right. <laughs> I, th I think he's dumb, maybe, because he probably, if he had just changed the music, he might have saved himself an argument, and all it takes is a couple of electrical impulses. But um, I also feel like it probably uh, lowered your... Standing in the eyes of your girlfriend's friend, which is kind of like, uh, you know, maybe you care, maybe you don't, but it's not going to make your life any easier. Let's put it that way. Uh, I I would have just changed the music, but I can understand why he wouldn't have. This is an interest. There's a, there's actually a lot of meat for discussion on this. Plus, I hope that we at least peepo would some rules about being in the car. I mean, there's only a couple of like rules in the car that are like sacrosanct, right? Is that is that how that word works? If they keep their car very clean and you open up like a bag of potato chips or something like that, like that's where you start to run into some issues, I think. That's where you're like, you don't compromise that one at all. Because I don't want to have to go get the Dyson down here and, you know, vacuum the Bugatti all-weather floor mats out just because you ate some hickory sticks. Like, just pull over and eat them in the woods like God intended. Anyway. I don't even mind eating in the car. The, here's and again, there's it's a complicated web of rules, right? But like, if you're gonna eat in the car, my rule is you have to give me some. I don't care if you're starving. If you're eating in the back seat, you you better like. I mean, if you got a ten piece, I'd expect one nug or at least like a, a little like grab of fries. You know what I mean? Like a little duck, a little duck grab of, of French fries. If you got a six piece, I'm not gonna take a whole nugget. That's a little crazy, but. You know, I might be like, hey, if we go through the drive through like, can you get me a drink or something like that? Anyway. <laughs> it's very complicated. This is why I, I think it's why I'm so hungry all the time. My brain's constantly running simulations on, on the proper way to behave, you know, with, with social norms and etiquette and context and, you know, this exact situation having extra concessions. Am I the asshole? For leaving a diner, a one star, oh, a di I, th I thought it was a human being. And I was like, oh my God, somebody actually made my website a reality where the restaurant owners can rate the customers. I was so happy. Uh, but then when I read more, okay, it's a, it's a diner, like a restaurant. All right. Am I the asshole for leaving a diner, a one star review? By the way, I'm sure, Dan, I, I don't know, I, I might have missed the raid. Thank you. Perfect timing for the Kanye West uh, OP as well. Am I the asshole for leaving a diner a one-star review for refusing to accommodate me and remake my food? Yesterday, I took my son out to eat for lunch. We decided to try a cute family-owned diner that had pretty good reviews. I have some severe, potentially life-threatening food allergies. All right, let's just... Not the asshole. And the only reason... I, I, I think, actually, you know what? They might be an asshole... Just for making the post. When you know immediately you're not going to come across as the asshole. If it was like, I don't like peanuts, then that's like, okay, maybe you were a bad customer. If you're like, if I eat them, I die. Um, then yeah, okay. Like you already have the moral high ground. Let's, let's see where it goes. 
I have some severe, potentially life-threatening food allergies, so I usually try to play it safe and order something I know does not have anything that could kill me in it. I ordered a toasted gluten-free grilled chicken breast wrap with lettuce, onions, and green peppers. Those were the listed ingredients, and that seemed safe. It's not something I would order, but I also don't have life-threatening gluten intolerance, okay? I'm not judging you based on your restaurant order. That's something we save for the banter and other contexts. On a roll, yes, sir. Yo, Ak, let me get a toasted gluten-free chicken breast wrap with lettuce, onions, green peppers on a roll. Yes, sir. Can't forget the Bev. You know I got to cop that tap water, that lukewarm tap water. Yes, sir. When I got my food, I noticed something red in it and picked it out with my fork. It was a tomato, which I am highly allergic to. There was tomatoes all through my food, so I was unable to eat it. Okay. I quietly motioned for someone to come over and explain the situation, and they called for the owner to listen to me. The owner said they'd remake my food, but they'd have to charge me again for the time and ingredients, even though I could not eat what I was given. This is, what I, this is the labor crunch in the United States right now. Margins have been pushed so thin, they can't even remake a, a toasted, gluten-free, grilled chicken breast, wrap with, uh, chicken breast wrap with lettuce, onions, and green peppers on a roll. Yes, sir. Hard not the asshole, though. I, I will say, if we're taking them at face value and their menu literally said it just has lettuce, onions, green peppers, and then it comes out with a tomato, if someone's allergic to tomato, you should remake it for free. If it said tomato on the menu, they missed it and said... Oh, sorry, I missed it. I still think you should make it for free, but also that they should offer to pay for it. And then, you know, I don't, you know, it, it's just whether you want to be a, the, the, a benevolent restaurant owner or whether you want to like nickel and dime somebody. I, I understand either way. Anyway, I pointed out that nowhere were tomatoes listed in any part of the dish I ordered. And if they were in a wrap, they should be listed, especially if someone has an allergy. The owner said they don't put everything up on the board and it's not a big deal. Okay, now, like this is getting complicated. I thought it was a menu, okay? Like a printed menu, but if it's on a, a, a text board, you know, like one of those, like, I don't even know how to describe them, like the plastic snap letters go onto it, or a chalkboard, I can understand why they wouldn't be able to write out every single ingredient this that's going to be on it. I would also, and now I'm, I'm, but now I'm like, you know what? I also feel like the restaurant owner is still kind of the asshole. I don't know if this is just a, a recent thing or if it's a, a Vancouver thing, but even if I'm like at a, if I'm at any kind of sit down restaurant, the wait staff always ask, hey, any food allergies that I got to know about? It's like one of the first things that comes up all the time. You, you order something and then they go, you know, hey, any food allergies? And then you leave that up to the, the diner to pass it on. But I don't know. You've never been asked that? It, ha it happens here, I would say, at like at least 70% of, of meals where I've sat down. Absolutely. Never heard it in the U.S.? That's crazy, man. I mean, it makes... I, I, I will say it didn't happen... Uh, you know, like until I moved here. So I don't know if it's a regional thing or if it's only started happening, you know, within the past decade or so. I, I probably was not asked for the first time until I was like, you know, 20. But anyway, um, and when when you get asked it, you're like, I'm surprised. I, I, I'm Let me rephrase. I'm not surprised. I'm surprised it is a more commonplace to be asked because, you know, I'm sure it, it, the odds of it are pretty low, but you don't want to feed somebody like chicken satay with a peanut sauce and then they eat it and die and they're like were there peanuts in that like people are very dumb <laughs> i think like it might be the responsibility of the diner don't get me wrong to make sure they don't eat something that's life-threatening but simultaneously i'm like you know it's uh people do things that are in their you know self not their self-interest all the time anyway um, owner said they don't put everything up on the board. It's not a big deal. And for me to either pay to have my food remade or I can choose not to eat, but I will not be receiving a second meal for free. Owner, kind of the asshole. 
I ended up reordering my meal to my specifications. It took 30 minutes to come out when before it was less than 10 and was obviously burned. I ate what I could and threw the rest away before leaving. I think this is a situation where you got to establish um, that, you know, for your son, you need to not eat at that restaurant, if that makes sense. Sometimes as a dad, I think, and I, I, am, I have the luxury of not having been put in this position yet, um, but sometimes as a dad, I think you need to go hungry in order to teach your child a lesson. And like, not in a negative way, but to be like, I would rather be hungry than give that business that I hate any more money. That's my take on that subject. The fact that he, maybe he was starving and he ordered again. But I think sometimes you gotta you gotta do a hunger strike like Chris Cornell and be like, nah, actually I'm fucking full. Actually I'm stuffed. I would not like another. You know what you could do is you could just bring me the bill, please. And then that's where the, then they go oh, and then everyone claps and they give you a crisp one hundred dollar bill or something. Um, and when you get home, yeah, you could just steal bread from the mouths of decadence. Um, anyway, I was really disappointed in the whole experience. Ended up writing a one-star review blasting the place for how I felt they treated me. Am I the asshole? Again, the, the context has absolutely no merit whatsoever. This is a type of wrap I had ordered at many places before, and it does not typically come with tomatoes. It would be the equivalent of getting a Philly cheesesteak with tomatoes, basically. Ah, uh, yes. I, I, anytime I go to a restaurant, I always scan the menu for my favorite wrap. A gluten-free toasted grilled chicken breast wrap with lettuce, onions, and green peppers. Let, lettuce, onions, green peppers. It's called the gluten-free toasted chicken breast log wrap. Class, it's usually near the top because every place has it. Um, and it never has tomatoes. A, a wrap with tomatoes in it? Are you stupid? Anyway, OP is not the asshole, obviously. But literally, like, this whole post is like, I was treated like shit at a restaurant. Uh, so I gave them a bad review on a food review website, which is the purpose of the food review website. Am I an asshole? No. Like, literally not at all. Um Seeking some attention and validation for the story, or maybe it's an upvote farm. You never know. Um, if the story is real, I feel like the restaurant owner, kind of an asshole. You know what? You know what's been uh, nice sometimes. You you go like pick up takeout from a restaurant. They have this like QR code menu outside. This is I'm I, I'm all about this now. You, you scan the QR code with your phone. It gives you a menu on your phone so you don't have to worry about this limited chalkboard space and stuff like that. You can even, like, you, you can scan, order whatever you want. You can pay. You don't even have to, like, deal with a human being. All it does is, like, point to a website. Anyway, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Regardless. Um, I mean, this, I've inserted my own anecdote now. <laughs> Also makes the menu translatable. There you go. The diner is the asshole for not doing the QR code menu. This is a big one for human beings. You know how long, for, for like a decade, I was talking about how the worst part of eating at a restaurant is waiting for the, when you're done your food, the server comes over and then they go, you want anything else? And then you go, I'll just take the bill, please. Then you got to wait for them to bring the bill. And then sometimes you look at the bill, but they've already left. And then they come back like in five minutes and you're like, I, oh, sorry, I need the machine. And then they go get the machine. Like it sometimes takes like 10 or 15 minutes to leave the restaurant when you're done your food. Now you just on your phone, you just scan the QR code, boop, boop, boop. You go pay. And then you're, you're good. You can just walk out and you feel like a damn gangster the whole time. But anyway, slash marker. I was talking about it for years. I'm not going to say that the pandemic accomplished anything good, but the expediting of the restaurant process, if it becomes normalized, I, I will at least be a fan of that. Okay, slash marker, react court one in the books. 